Hey there, my friends, and welcome to the Creative Shop Talk podcast. I'm your host, Wendy Batten, and I'm so happy to be here with you this week. Thank you for taking some time to join me. And today we're going to be talking about something that some of my retailers listen to me and then they take it in and they push back a little tiny bit. And I want you to listen with open ears today as we talk about branding yourself, not the product lines that you carry. And I want you to listen through because there's a really, really big reason for it. I'm going to share with you a couple of horror stories. (laughs) It's really not fun, but I have been working with a lot of retailers and I see a lot of things, as you can imagine. And my question to you would be, do you have all of your eggs in one basket? Having yourself branded differently than your own brand, and and I'll explain that a little tiny bit, or relying on one brand or one thing to bring you in the majority of your revenue is not always a good idea. And let's talk about that. So let's get into it. Grab a coffee. Sit back. Let's chat. Running a retail business doesn't have to be so hard. Welcome to the Creative Shop Talk podcast, the go-to podcast for creative shop owners, studio owners, and independent retailers. I'm your host, Wendy Batten, retail business coach and mentor. Each week, I'll share simple proven business strategies, inspiring stories from fellow retailers and advice from industry experts. Together, we're going to work to find the success you want from your retail business with more profits in your till and a little more joy in your life. Okay, so I have retailers that come to me sometimes when it's too late. And I and I don't mean it in a horrific way. I mean in this is what happened and I don't know how to fix it way. So I want to share with you some of those stories. I want to just have your eyes wide open to what can happen. So again, do you have a brand that are keeping you in business? (laughs) Are all your eggs in one basket? I see this regularly where the majority of the revenue is coming from one product line. Maybe it's an amazing product line and maybe it's wonderful that you are able to carry it, but what happens if something happens and something can happen. So a couple of retailers that I have pulled out their stories for you. One of my retailers, 80% of her sales came from one product line. So that's fine. It was great. Actually, we were working on a growth strategy for her. She was estimating, you know, next year that it would her sales would increase. And of course, on that product line, and we were increasing the numbers. And guess what happened? There was a mass disruption in that product lines business. The business itself um, ceased to operate, (laughs) ceased to exist. So what happens when that happens? Like, what do you do? Do you just, okay, we'll move on to the next thing. Like she had a massive revenue gap when that product stopped shipping. It just stopped shipping. All of a sudden, First, there was some delays and then the business just went out of business. We don't know what's going on behind closed doors, my friends. (laughs) We never know. It might all seem and be amazing on the front end, but on the back end of some of some businesses might not be so amazing. So this revenue stream, 80% of her sales was completely gone. Wow, right? So, you know, lots of pivots and shifts and adjustments, and that's a vulnerable place to be. I have another retailer who did over $100,000 in sales from brand X, just one particular brand, $100,000 in sales. Um, you know, his it was a very large chunk of his business and he had great plans in place for expansion and consistently increasing that revenue stream, the percentage of that revenue stream, consistently growing that over the years. And all of a sudden, that company broke their contract. It was new owners, broke their contract, and there was somebody one mile away, one mile away selling the same product. Now, I have lots of solutions to help you with that if, if if that happens to you, meaning that we can still stand out and stand apart and maybe become, you know, really well known as that brand's ambassador. But 
with only a mile difference, the revenue dropped to less than half, even though there was lots of things put in place to try to keep that um, those customers. The, the truth of it was customers could buy it closer to them if they were in he, this particular retailer had a urban city closer and then they just went there instead of coming. They didn't stay loyal, I guess is what I'm saying. So 50% of the sales roughly were dropped right away, like as soon as that other store was given um, permission. So wow, again, right? So now, (laughs) you know, what do we do when we lose 50% of our sales or we lose 80% of our sales because we're relying on it? I have another retailer who was selling a very popular brand. It was a DIY uh, product, uh, you know, a creative product. And they left all the marketing. They didn't do any marketing. (laughs) They had really great sales and lots of people coming in the door because of that brand was bringing in people through the door. They had like really no interest in marketing, just sharing a little bit of that that brand's marketing. And 65% of their sales, actually 68% of their sales, but 100% of their marketing was left up to the paint brand. It was a paint brand. So that's great. That's fine. It was a lot easier for them, right? The problem became when everybody was referring to that store by the brand's name. So this store owner would say, oh, you know, I'm Susie's gift shop. (laughs) And it wasn't Susie's gift shop, by the way. Um, I'm Susie's gift shop. And people would say, oh, where's that? And then they would say, oh, the paint store. Like they would say the name of the paint brand. And it's like, wow, right? So that retailer became known as that brand of that product, of one product inside her store, not her store. Nobody, nobody knew even the store name. I think the only time they saw the store name was when they pulled in the parking lot and saw the sign. That was it. Everything else was all about this beautiful brand that they were selling. The problem happened, of course, you know what I'm going to tell you, when that brand got rid of territories and gave away uh, lots of uh, territories around her. And I have a lot to say about territories. We can talk about that at length on another podcast. But you cannot, cannot, cannot rely on one brand to carry you. You cannot. It is just not smart business. Brands will close. Brands will get greedy. I mean, we they're they're running a business. Maybe you know they're 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 doing different business. Um, they're doing business for themselves. They might just close. Like they might just close. Like like my retailer at the in the first example. You know, they literally just went out of business. The company just went out of business. So things happen. Things change. Things you know pivot. You cannot, you do not want to be at somebody else's mercy. So do not have all your eggs in one basket is where we're going with this. So let's talk about how we can avoid that. I'm going to give you some tips today so that you can still love on the brands that you love. You can still have those beautiful brands and make those amazing sales. That's not what I'm where I'm going with this. What I want you to be super conscious of and intentional about and what I would love for you to do takeaway from this episode is to be asking yourself, what brands do I have? Where are my income streams coming from? What happens if that particular brand or that particular stream of revenue, this isn't just about brands, it's about streams of revenue, goes away. Now we all know what happened over the last year. There's been lots of pivots and shifts and never say never of anything, right? So never say never that your brand is going to do something to you. I don't want to say crappy. That's where where I was kind of headed with that, but I don't mean crappy. So brands do make shifts and pivots and decisions to protect themselves. It's always going to happen. It's, they're not, it's a (laughs) win-win when, when everybody's happy and everybody's working together, but they are running businesses as well too. They can fail as well too. They can just close. They can just change. Things can happen. The formula of the way they create their ceramic plates could change. Their designers could change that you might not like. So it is your job as the head honcho queen bee CEO of your creative shop to make sure and to your business, your retail business, to make sure that you're not at the mercy 
of someone else. So this is where we put our CEO hats on and we take a really good hard look at where our income is coming from. And I see a lot of retailers now doing this. I have We have this conversation inside my retailers inner circle regularly. And it's been really fun. And I, you know, I have some retailers that have really, um, again, not pushed back on this, but at first they're like, no, 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 this is, this product's great. And, you know, they're bringing in tons of clients and all, all is good, but all is good until it's not good. The pandemic alone uh, should show us that there's disruption in even supply and demand, right? So what we can get from our, from our brands. So Let's have the first thing we want to do is take a really good hard look at all of our product suites, all of our revenue streams, how we're bringing in income into our business. And then we look at what would happen if that brand is gone or what would happen if that stream is gone? What could we pull our socks up with? What could we do? How can we make adjustments? Are we relying too heavily on this or that? So that is a really good exercise that I run a lot of my clients through. And we, again, we talk about it all the time inside my retailers inner circle. It's a very common topic of conversation in our group Q and A's. So what services could you add or what product suites could you add? Maybe there's new revenue streams that you can add. So maybe adding a subscription box for a regular recurring payment. Maybe there's a paid group or adding an e-commerce side to your business. Maybe there's a whole, maybe there's a product you can wholesale. Maybe there's workshops you can add or design services or, or, or there's all kinds of different opportunities that you can add to, or yeah, add to your business to generate different revenue streams. So if something happens to your subscription boxes, your group or your wholesale, you know, is is there to to be to pick up the slack. If something happens to brand A, that's okay. We're not all our eggs aren't in one basket. We can we can push brand B and we can replace brand A or we can be okay with brand A not making as much so that we'll amp up and brand B and C and D and E. <laughs> like we want to have a really great overview of products. Again, inside my um, retailers inner circle, we have uh, an entire masterclass on inventory and how to, you know, the different types and different levels of inventory that we should have. So, and that kind of goes to our revenue streams as well too, right? We want to make sure we have a broad spectrum of revenue streams and inventory and not just all our eggs in one basket. So the next part to that is what I mentioned earlier is branding yourself, not your products. So like my client who was who became known as that brand's store, <laughs> like you know, it would be like, you know, even one of the major stores, like, you know, we don't, she didn't, she didn't have anything, anything anywhere really that was marketing herself. And even, you know, like her, her store name was on the outside, but that was pretty much it. Everything else, she was using their marketing. She was using their, um, their you know, their tags on her product because that was one of her main products. And she was even using um, postcards and, you know, lots of different marketing, which is wonderful add-ons to your marketing. It's amazing. It's so wonderful when brands supply that and they support you. And I think that's super important. And we've, we've, spoken to other to brand owners here on the podcast before about how they're supporting their retailers that's a support to your marketing that is not your marketing so just going through your shop right now and making sure that you are marketing yourself that you're not using a, a brand any brand any brand from anywhere as your logo or featured prominently all over your website yes we want to feature them and promote them but i don't mean i don't mean without lack of your own branding. So having your own brand and your own branding message and your own, like people know who you are. They know you're in, you know, they know you're in a store that's, you know, this is the store's name. They know you're in there. They know that where they are, the signage all around your store. They just want to feel that they're in your particular shop, not just all about one kind of brand. I think it's amazing and wonderful if you have a product in your shop that people are coming to you for. That is amazing. It's wonderful. That's why we pick brands that are, you know, um, good quality and have a good reputation. We just need to make sure that well that we have that product and we bring people in that they know they're in our store and that 
you know, this is the service we're giving them. And, you know, we're so happy to be carrying that. I think it's wonderful to carry brands like that. Just don't rely on that being your only marketing or your only way of being known in the world. That's just not going to work. You know, everybody else, if everybody in the street starts carrying that brand, let's just go, you know, there's 10 people on your in within a one mile radius carrying that brand. Don't say never because it does happen. You know, how are you going to dif- differentiate yourself? How are you going to market? How are you going to be known? We have to really stay brandable, stay unique, and f- then just feature those products and feature those brands um, and not be those brands. I hope that makes sense to you today. Our next part is we really have to plan out our own marketing. So having your own marketing, your own promotions, and again, that just touches to what I mentioned earlier. This is where you will stand out. This is how you will identify, how you will attract new customers, how you will bring them in, whether you're carrying brand A or B or C, or whether you're doing service A or B or C, you will stand out because you're you're going to be known as the place to go, the go-to for all kinds of things. And one of the, and the brands might be it. So make sure that you are putting a marketing and promotions plan in place. Use brands marketing materials as a tool, not as your only branding tool. So make sure that you have your, you know, your own branding colors. And, you know, it doesn't have to be fancy branding if you don't have it all together yet. That's fine. But you do need to be known and and branding yourself. One thing on branding I wanted to mention when you are branding just using the marketing that your companies are sharing with you, if everybody is doing the same promotion, which I see this a lot, especially those of you that are listening that may be paint retailers. I know we have a lot of um, creative and DIYers listening, but if you're a, a retailer of a product and everybody that month is featuring the same color of the month, it's great to do that, but what's making you stand out? So let's make sure you have your own promotions, you know, your feature, you know, a customer of the month or do something different. It's okay to use their promotions, but in addition, have your own marketing promotions. Stand out, be different, be rememberable. Don't be the same as everybody else. One tiny little side note, I guess, as a bonus, (laughs) bonus to all of this, you know, how you can not have all your eggs in one basket is do your homework, my friend. Do your homework on brands. So Sometimes we have a tendency, we think things are better and they, you know, we we're like, oh, we're going to bring that brand in. If we get that brand, it'll be all, everything will be great and magic and our, in our world, we'd be wonderful if we get this brand in. That's not always the case. So I always say, do your homework. I always say, do your homework by checking with retailers that are already selling that product. That's a really simple way. Retailers will help retailers. I know even if it's just, if you're, if you're a member of my inner circle or if you or a future member of our inner circle, you know, asking questions inside uh, quality groups like that, you know, it's going to help you with your homework. Who else is selling, you know, pottery ABC or whatever, or what, what's a really good pottery brand or what's a really good China or f- dried flowers or whatever it is that you're looking for. If it's a brand that you want because it has, it's well known. If it's a brand you want because, um, you know, you've just, you just think that customers are going to come in and look for it and ask for it. And it's not always, and I, I, this is where I want you to do your homework. It's, you're looking at it as a, from a marketing, from a a customer's point of view, which is great. We want something that's marketable, but do your back end homework, check the margins. I see lots and lots of brands that are really popular and people are carrying them and their margins are crap. (laughs) Like they're terrible margins. And or their shipping is really high or they have poor customer service or they are not really known as being very nice to their, you know, their retailers. There's all kinds of stories. And you get that by asking fellow retailers and retailers are, are I find if you can connect with a few uh, retailers, retailers helping retailers is, is a really uh, great way to, to do that homework. Because, of course, if you email the brand and you say, what's your reputation like? <laughs> They're going to tell you. But reach out to a few retailers that you can see that are using that brand, especially if you have relationships with them. People will, retailers will tell you, you'd tell somebody if they uh, if they emailed you, they, you'd be honest with them. So I just wanted to share this today. So make sure you don't have all your eggs in one basket by making sure that we're moving and sorting out our revenue streams. And we're not 
relying on one thing to carry our business. It's just smart business sense. We don't want to have all of our revenue, like 80% of our sales coming from one product line or planning on, you know, massive expansion, like my other client, you know, and then find out that that whole product line was gone because they put uh, territories or they put people in next to them. My other retailer that was branding, not branding herself, she was 100% of her branding of her marketing was all about the other, about the brand. Brand was doing good. She was making really good money, but you need to brand yourself because we do not know what's going to happen. Again, we don't want to be at the mercy of somebody else. So our job as the CEO of our beautiful retail businesses is to look at all those numbers and look at each revenue stream and ask ourselves, what would happen if I lost that? What would happen if they, you know, if somebody moved in next door? What would happen if, and don't, that's also limited mindset. It's okay if you have somebody close to you, but another podcast for another day. But realistically, how is that going to affect my sales? What is going to happen if something happens and I lose a particular line of a whole stream of revenue. What other revenue streams do I have? Where can I fill the gaps? Having a really good overview of your business and understanding where all your revenue streams are, where all your product lines are, and having a really good mix, an inventory mix, is just smart business. We don't want to be at the mercy of somebody else. I know I've said that three or four times during this podcast, but it's really important that we understand that. I see this regularly. I see retailers who like regularly, like so regularly that this was not a podcast plan for today. And I just got an email this morning from another retailer. Gosh, you guys, like it breaks my heart. Like it breaks my heart when I see hardworking, beautiful, amazing shop owners really just getting the boots put to them by a brand and feeling like they have no choice sometimes when the brands think that they have them over over a barrel. So, but you have choices, my friends. There are so many. I I know we've built our business up, some of us on, you know, loving on a brand and that's wonderful. It's really great. But just always have in the back of your mind that we can love on multiple brands and we can love on multiple things. And that is not our business. And they are the, ultimately the ones who are going to choose um, whether or not we continue selling it. And oh, they aren't the ones, but they might make decisions that will greatly affect our business. Like the retailer that emailed me this morning, she said, you know, she, her business is about to be greatly affected. And, you know, we're going to, we're going to work it out. We're going to get it fixed. You know, it's going to be a conversation that's going to happen inside our retailers inner circle, because that's what we do in there. We support and help retailers get through crazy times. So, I hope they found this helpful. I hope that it made you at least think and look back and look at what your um, product suite is, what your revenue streams are coming in. Hopefully it's got the wheels turning. Hopefully it's got you really thinking about, nope, I'm good or, oh man, that's going to hurt and ouch if something happens to that one brand. Please do not think it can't happen to you. We all saw what happened last year. We did not think that could happen. So I'm not someone to say that we need to be like always worst case scenario. We do need to be prepared, right? We need to be prepared and we also need to be diversified. That's just smart business. That's just what smart business people like you do because you're awesome, right? So I hope you found it helpful. Um, If I can support you in any way, you all know, and you know, your retail journey is so beautiful. It's so important. You have a dream. I know you do. I know that you have a vision for your business. It is my uh, my goal in life to help retailers reclaim that dream and make sure that they're getting the vision that they want. I help retailers uh, in a couple of different ways, but I work one-on-one and do private coaching with retailers, but I also have an amazing group. And you've heard me mention many times the Retailers Inner Circle. Uh, it is a great group of supporting, encouraging, and um, wonderful retailers leveling up, working together to help them wear that CEO hat with pride, but also uh, to be encouraged to to keep moving forward and brain dumping and brainstorming because sometimes that's what we need, right? We just need to have some some support along the way and someone to maybe help and guide. We have lots of master classes. We have inventory master classes in there. We have uh, lessons in a library that you can go in and get, or you can just come in for the encouragement if you don't need that at any particular time. It's kind of like a spoonful when you need it, kind of 
group. Um, and so that's the retailers inner circle. And we are accepting new members at this time. So if that's something that's of interest to you, you can find out more information at wendybatten.com slash inner dash circle. You can find out more information there or in the show notes, we'll have links to there. Okay, my friends have a wonderful week. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate you taking the time here. I know you're building a beautiful business. And again, if I can support you anyway, along that journey, uh, please reach out. So we'll see you next week, my friend. Well, that's it for this week's episode of the creative shop talk podcast. I'm so glad that you're here to join us this week and I hope you found value in what we're sharing here. I want to remind you that our website has all of the show notes. You can find it at wendybatten.com slash podcast. Everything that you need to hear about today's podcast is there. Also an opportunity if you need to reach out to me. If I can support you in any way whatsoever, please feel free to reach out. Make sure you join our Rockstar Creatives Facebook group. We will continue the conversation over there weekly. So thanks for joining us. Please leave a review, subscribe if you can, and never miss an episode. We hope to see you back here again next week. Thanks, my friend. Have a great week.